I'm Mike Pease and I want to talk to you about making a fun little project, a one-piece uh, coffee scoop. Um, these are turned in, in two directions. They were talked to me by a friend of mine, professional wood attorney uh, Peg Schmidt, and she showed me an easy way to turn these by making a, uh, a donut chuck. And we're going to cover uh, how to make this donut chuck in the last part of the video, but first we're going to start off by turning one. And it's basically a simple spindle project where you're going to turn this handle and knob in one axis as a spindle project. Then we're going to mount it in the donut chuck and hollow it out. So let's get started making one. Okay, we're going to start with this block of wood, approximately two inches square. Most any wood will do. This is a Bradford pear, but cherry, uh, uh, maple, most anything. As long as it's not uh, not punky, doesn't have uh, worm holes in it. Uh, they don't make good coffee scoops. So we're going to start by marking where we're going to put our drive center. There, mark it there, and just put this between the centers. Okay. And then the first thing we're going to do is, is round this off. it with a spindle roughing gouge and then we'll start to uh, start shaping it with a with a spindle gouge. Now frequently with the size of this wood, if you turn it completely around, it may not fit in the chuck, and I think that may be the case here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and start the rounding off. I'm going to go ahead and put a tenon on it, and then I'll finish the rounding process. So we're going to take a parting tool, and we're just going to... Put a shoulder on it. I'll take my handy dandy chuck gouges and just double double check that and yep that's well within the range. Side and finish rounding it off. Now, we're trying to make this one and three quarters inch thick, so I'm going to go ahead and take uh, my calipers and using this handy jig, we're going to set it at one and three quarters. And that'll make it easy to tell when we're there.
just got a little bit of a spot. Mm -hmm. Still a little bit more. We'll get rid of that. Now, to get rid of that damage from the drive center we're going to part this off about a quarter inch down uh, and then we'll finish removing it later but and then we're going to mark this off same length as the diameter so we'll have a nice round round ball we're going to part down next to that Not quite round, so we're just going to take off just a hair more. We're going to take one more part to the side. Now we're going to finish turning this into a round, round ball before we start working on the handle. We want to leave as much mass back here so when we put this thing into a uh, into a chuck uh, we're not going to get any chatter now we're going to go ahead and put this in a scroll chuck and finish the shaping and we're going to bring up the tailstock support as long as possible Shaping in, I'm going to switch to a little smaller tool, tool rest. And we're going to get out a 3 8 inch spindle gouge, and that's what I'm going to use to shape this, this bowl. Before we uh, start shaping it, though, I think it might be good for us to kind of mark the middle of the bowl. As long as we leave that mark there, that'll be the widest diameter. This is just basically a large bead starting laying on it on the bottom. Lift, turn, rotate. Bring the handle up. Tool rest just a little high. Let's lower it just a little bit. Get a little bit closer for support. And on the other side. A view of the spindle gouge work. Again, lay it on the side. Lift. Rotate. Little catch there. Just 
tells me I think it's time for me to sharpen this, so let me take a quick break. Okay, I'm back. eyeball that and it looks fairly round. Let me show you one quick little technique that will help check that. Here's a small circle of, of maybe PVC that's round and you can by rotating this over you can see the high spots as you move this around and you can get a feel for where you need to come down just a little bit. So I see a little bit of high spot still there on the corner. looking pretty good. Now at this point in time we can start working on the handle. So we're going to back this off a little bit. We're going to worry about taking this off in a little bit, a little bit later. Use the side of that. Take a bit of a peeling cut. Now we're going to add a little bit of a decorative detail in there, and that's going to be a uh, we're going to make a captive ring. So to do that, we're going to use this little tool. Uh, it's made out of a quarter inch, uh, eight by eight inch. Uh, high-speed steel rod from Inco. They sell for about three and a half bucks. And you just grind it flat and bring it back. And you can see a little bit of a profile there. And we'll use that to actually shape the claw. First thing we're going to do is just come down on each side of where that ring is going to be. Now, before we undercut it, we're going to put a little drip, a little CA glue to strengthen those fibers a little bit. So let me get some of that. So I've got some thin CA, and we're just going to drizzle a little bit of that, and some of that will get on both sides.
I don't like to smell that stuff. We're going to set it aside for just a second after we squeeze the air out of here. Now I'm going to resort to a detail spindle gal at the gouge. It's a little uh, shallower, a little pointier, make it easier to get in and do some detail. And we're going to get in there and do a little bit on each side before we start undercutting that bead. So we're going to get the speed up. Now we're going to start with our captive, captive ring tool. We're going to bring this up a little bit higher because this is a scraper, so we need to be in a negative rate at a slightly downward position. So we're going to work behind it, coming in from an angle like this. Before I cut this away, let me go ahead and take a second to sand it just a touch because once that bead comes flopping loose, our chance for sanding it goes away. Holding it flat, securing it to a good position. freed it up. Now all we have to do is clean up a little bit on each side. I'm going to go ahead and finish taking off this nub, start working backwards a little bit here on, on shaping the handle. Before we do that, let's take off just a little bit more of that while I've got some support. Because that's leveraged pretty far out, and I don't want to get chatter on the end of this. Let's speed this up a little bit. This is a quarter inch detail gouge, very small, easy to get into detail, like this. Okay, time to finish shaping the handle. Maybe add a couple of decorative burn grooves.
Okay, you didn't need a lesson in sanding, so I didn't bother to uh, to show that. I sanded it off camera. Now I'm going to show you how to put a few bird rings. Most of y'all might be familiar with that, but uh, it's a pretty simple operation. You can either use a skew on its side, or I like to use a, a point tool or a pyramid tool. Uh, it's just, uh, in this case, 5 16 inch, but it could be a quarter inch, similar to that same Inco rod I used for the uh, cat's claw. And we're just going to put, uh, oh, let's say, put a groove here. And we're going to put a series of them. One on each side of the handle to balance. And that takes care of it. That's just kind of keep the burn wire in place. I have three different uh, burn wires. In this case, we're going to use the really thin one. This is some nichrome uh, steel. We're going to rain, uh, rev the speed up a little bit. Make sure you don't ever wrap these things around your finger because it'll slice your finger off. I put a little ball on each end. We're going to get this thing up to oh, maybe 1500. And when we put it in there, notice I drop the handle in the back to get a little extra friction until I see it burning. And there's the smoke. There's the smoke. That gives it just a little bit of decorative detail. Now we've got this thing pretty well sanded, so we're going to go ahead and get ready to part it off. I'm going to shape the uh, down here just a little bit more and then bring it on back. I'm going to use my detail spindle guys for that. Just a little bit more room. Take off just here more wood. And that's not the best way to part it off, but we can trim that up without any problem. So, it survived the fall without any problems. We're going to just trim that up just a bit with a, with a pocket knife and then touch it up with some sandpaper. And then we'll be ready to put it in the donut chuck and hollow it out. Okay. Okay, we've mounted this securely in the donut chuck. Now we're going to bring up the tail stock with a drill chuck and a 3 8 inch uh, drill bit. And we're going to go ahead and just get us a, a depth hole, something that makes it a little easier to hollow this thing out. Now how deep we're going to go, we're going to go one and a half inches. Remember the block? Uh, the ball is one and three quarters, so we're going to give ourselves an extra quarter inch at the bottom to kind of play with. And so we're going to drill that hole an inch and a half. And I'm just getting a rough idea. Actually, the easiest way is to go ahead and mark it with a piece of tape. So we'll have 
good way of showing you that. Well, we just go ahead and put a piece of tape on here. Let's see if that's... Yeah, that's close to an inch and a quarter. I think that'll hold. We're going to slow the speed down just a little bit. Being careful to get the tool rest out of the way. Because when that thing comes around, you don't want to smack you with a tool rest. Not to still make me nervous. So we've got a speed of about, oh, seven, 700. I may block this view a little bit. If I am sorry. Lock that down. Be sure to hold down the Jacobs chuck as you drill. Drill slowly. Make sure the chips are clearing. Sometimes you have to back out. This is fairly dry. I'm going to go ahead and back it out. Clear the chips a little bit. Go back down in there. got that depth hole. We're going to go ahead and now notice I kept my left hand on that Jacob's chuck as I was pulling it out because you don't want that thing to grab and pull that chuck out. Scary things happen. I know a fellow woodturner that got hurt doing that. I'm going to go ahead and move this tailstock down to the uh, the headstock down to the end to make it a little easier to for you to get so a good camera view. So I just simply move my headstock onto so let's do onto my cabinet and slid it out of the way. Now I can work from the end of the lathe, which ergonomically is just a little bit easier. So a couple of tools. I'm going to start off with a spindle gouge. The one thing I'm going to be careful of is this spinny, spinning handle around. And I'm going to come over here and it's, and we're going to work the inside uh, and start hollowing it out. Remember this is a bowl orientation. In other words, this is face grain. So you're going to hollow from, from the rim to the inside. Speed up a little bit. We've got 1400. Be very careful with where I place my hands. small bowl gouge. I think I'll try that. Let's see. Let's see if we can do a little better with this. Drop that just a little bit. Okay, we're going to go back at it a little more. got a hole. I'm having a difficult time making that transition at the bottom so I'm going to go ahead and switch to a, to a rather unorthodox looking scraper, a Dale Nish style scraper. I reground this from a, I don't know, a half inch skew or a scraper or spear point or something but 
of a Harbor Freight set, but we're going to go in there and use that scraper primarily down near the bottom. I know the wall is still fairly thick. Go down again to about oh, 1300 or so. I've got the rest back off a little bit, so I've got it on this flat area, so I won't have any torque. We're going to just ease Feels like I've gotten rid of that little hole at the bottom. Let me see. No, it's still there. I've got a ways to go. I gotta tell you, I have made more fat ones than I have gone through the bottom. Uh, maybe that's me because I'm rather cautious, but there's a lot of wood down there. Uh, I'm down there at the bottom of the hole, and I've done a pretty good job cleaning it out. Let me show you a little trick that I helped. The only way you can tell for sure, it's hard to get calipers around, around here without taking it off and putting it back on and get, trying to get it centered again, which is a challenge. So I've made these little spring calipers. And these fit, and I can just slide these in. And based on the tension, that's very snug. I can feel that that's snug. I know I got a ways to go, and that's right at the center of the bowl. So I know the wall is is definitely got more room. So let's turn it back on. And go back at it again. fine line between having a little miniature funnel and having two thick walls that make it kind of clunky. It's those thin walls that really make it nice. And I think we're just about there. Let's try this jig one more time. I've learned, oh yeah, I've learned to trust that jig. So that's good. That's, that's excellent. Let me show you a quick technique for sanding the inside of these. I just made these, I put a little cotton on the end of a stick, uh, wrapped it uh, two ways, once this way, once this way with thin strips, and I've got uh, several grits up to at least two, 240, and that makes generally quick work, quick work around the inside. So we're going to slow it down just a little bit, and we're just going to show you how that works. Get in there on the, on the bottom. Come up around the side. We're getting rid of any ridges. We just want this thing to feel nice and smooth. It's the 100. 
go to 120. And you get the idea. Okay, I've loosened the screws. We're taking those out, all of them but one. And then it'll pivot on that last one. Pull it away. Make sure that ball's in there and it'll just slide on out. And, and there we are. Nice one piece scoop. Uh, all it needs is a little finish. Uh, some people use mineral oil. I don't care for that. I tend to use uh, antique oil. I put maybe two coats on these utility items. But sometimes the best finish is no finish. So there we are. Now we're going to move on to making uh, how you make this this uh, donut chuck. I'm relying heavy on, heavily on the text and pictures in my August 2012 article in American Wood Turner for this section. First, make the back plate. Begin with a 1 inch 25 millimeter thick piece of hardwood cut to about 5.5 inches square. Drill a 1 8 inch hole through the center. Mount the blank between centers and turn it round and cut a tenon a quarter inch long to fit your scroll chuck. Believe it or not, rounding from a square on the lathe is faster than cutting round on a bandsaw. I use a half inch bowl gouge for turning the piece round and a parting tool and skew to shape the tenon. Next, draw the circle halfway between the edge of the tenon and the edge of the plate as shown here. You'll use this line later when drilling holes for the T-nuts. Round over the edges, front and back. Cut a blank for the donut from a piece of 3 quarter inch uh, hardwood and make it five and a half inches square. Mark the diagonals to locate its center then drill a shallow one eighth inch hole in the center. Remove the back plate from the lathe and screw it tenon side up to the donut square using the one eighth inch hole. Next locate the T-nut holes. Lay a ruler across the tenon lining it up from the uh, with the diagonals on the donut chuck. The centers for the T-nuts are where the diagonals cross the, the uh, circle on the back plate. The halves of the chuck are held together with a quarter inch machine screw, uh, screws and matching T-nuts. The screws should be two and a half inches to three inches long. Begin by drilling a one eighth inch pilot hole through both pieces of wood. Place the assembly tenon side up on a drill press. Use a three-quarter inch Forstner uh, bit to drill four shallow holes to recess the heads of the T-nuts in the back of the plate. Align the center point of the Forstner bit to, in the pilot hole. Do not drill deeper than necessary to make the T-nuts flush with the surface. Flip the assembly over and drill four more shallow holes to recess the screw heads. Measure the shoulder of the T-nut to determine the correct drill size for the main hole. It'll probably be about 5 sixteenths of an inch or 8 millimeter. Drill through both pieces of wood centering the bit on the pilot hole. You'll find that a 5 sixteenths inch hole provides some necessary play for the machine screws. Finally, drill a side hole to accommodate the scoop handle. Stand the wood on its side and grab it with a large wood screw clamp. Make sure that the clamp contacts the entire flat surface of the wood and is screwed tight. Use a 7 8 inch Forstner bit to drill down one side of the chuck, centering the bit where the two plates touch. Drill carefully and slowly and clear chips from the hole frequently. Drill to just past the center of the tenon. Hammer T-nuts into the holes in the back plate. Screw in at least two screws opposite each other and tighten them to hold the two pieces of wood together. Remove the center screw. Mount the two pieces into a scroll chuck using the tenon on the back plate. Turn the donut round with a bowl gouge and round over the edge. To make the hole in the donut, begin by marking a one and a half inch circle on it. Use a spindle gouge to hollow the opening to that line. Round over the front edge to remove any sharp edges. This will make the shoulders of this opening approximately one and three quarter inches in diameter. Be aware that the screw heads are close to the cutting area. Stop hollowing when you've cut into the back plate. 
Leave the back plate in the chuck but remove the screws and set the donut aside. Use a spindle gouge to hollow the center of the back plate to mimic the round ball of the scoop. This hollow does not have to be exact but it must be concave. You will be able to use the chuck for a variety of scoop chucks, uh, uh, scoops if you make the hollow larger than necessary. This chuck will accommodate scoop balls ranging from about 1 and 9 sixteenths of an inch to 1 and 3 quarter inches in diameter. Do not hollow more than 3 eighths inch deep. Cutting deeper can cause the tenon to fail. Reattach the donut to the back plate, but reverse the donut so the interior face is now out. Begin in the center and remove any remaining wood from the previous hollowing. Round over all the edges so that uh, any surfaces touching the ball of the scoop will not leave a mark or depression. If the chuck does leave a mark on your scoops, glue in a ring of thin leather or closed cell foam like fun foam from a craft store. The shoulder of the opening will be close to two inches. Remove the screws and remount the donut with its front side out. Your chuck is now ready to use.